What's up guys, JS2 Sense here, and I'm gonna do a video that I've actually never done. And when there's many people building their new computers or first computers or just waiting for graphics cards to be able to finish their builds, I decided let's go ahead and do a video where we talk about some of the tools that every PC enthusiast, whether new or veteran, should have in their toolbox. Today's video is sponsored by iFixit, and iFixit's Father's Day Today's video is sponsored by iFixit and their iFixit Father's Day promotion. And they figured the best way to show my love for Father's Day is to torture her with some Father's Day jokes. Are you ready? How does Darth Vader take his toast? No. <laughs> On the dark side. Did you know the circle is the most ridiculous shape in the world? There's absolutely no point to it. I was gonna tell you a dad joke about construction, but I'm still working on it. What do you get if you put ducks in a cement mixer? You get quacks in the pavement. <laughs> so this Father's Day, give your father figure the best gift ever by heading to the link in the description below where you can save $10 off any order $50 or more by using my link and offer code DADS2021. What do you, what do you think? You like my, you like my jokes? <laughs> so this is gonna kind of progress from a very basic to a little bit more advanced in the types of tools. And obviously this video is brought to you by iFixit. So a huge thank you to iFixit for sponsoring this video. You guys saw the ad, I, I made my daughter cry, it's worth it, but whatever. One of the very first things I think you should have in your toolbox, without a doubt, is a multi-bit screwdriver. Now you're gonna see these come in all sorts of different flavors and fashion. Basically it's just a screwdriver that pops out of a handle and then you've got multi-tips on it each side. Basically a Phillips and a flathead both a big and a small. That's basically the way that works out too. And to be honest, this is just about the only tool you really need to build a computer. Now there are other tools that you guys can use that would make things a little bit easier. Like for instance, if you wanted to step up the screwdriver just a little bit to the next level, if you've ever sat there and screwed in all of the standoffs on your motherboard and you're doing the thing, you could make sure that the one that you have has a magnetic tip, or at least the tips themselves are magnetic because nothing sucks more than trying to put that screw down in between that VRM heat sink and that eight pin EPS power plug and having the screw just fall down in there and then here you are shaking it all upside down trying to get the screw out, gets, gets, gets caught on every single trace and SMD on the top of the motherboard. So having a magnetic tip would allow you to set it on the end of the screwdriver, bring it down into place and then just start screwing it. Now one thing that you can also do if you wanna step this up and start taking all of the repetitive motion out of it and giving yourself carpal tunnel, is step up to a motorized screwdriver. Now this is one that I've showed a million times on this channel. People always ask me, Jay, which one is that? I don't even think they sell this one on Amazon anymore. It's literally the cheapest one I could find. Um, it's not even my favorite. So for instance, it's motorized. And by activating it, you just twist this little knob right here, left for reverse and right for clockwise, for tight and loose. But it has a couple of other things built in. It's got a power tester. So if you're testing a circuit to see if it had power, you can see right here, it's got the little lightning bolt symbol. So you would just hold that button down and, hey, there are signs of activity up there. Uh, it's proven now, you guys can shut up about it. So anyway, you can use this to see whether or not you've got power going through a wire. Um, it's more or less designed for AC power rather than DC, but it does still work obviously with even low power sources. But this one right here also has something interesting here in that it has a wire cutter. In fact, let me demonstrate that one for you because that one's really interesting. So this one's just interesting though, like I said, because it has this built-in wire cutter. So if I was to, ah, come on. Mm. So not that you would really be using this in any sort of PC building you know, environment or whatever. It's just kind of neat, I think, to have a built-in wire cutter in there. So you can just thread that through and then just be like, yoink. And push that down again and just be like, yoink. Well, I wouldn't buy it for that purpose. It doesn't work too well. You know, in fact, if you were gonna be doing that, I would just buy yourself a nice set of side cutters because what goes along with these side cutters are zip ties. Yes, zip ties. These are your best friends when it comes to cable management. Pretty obvious reason. So that's what the side cutters are for, so that you can snip the, uh, 
zip ties so you can get all your cable management nice and tight. Not necessarily for cutting wires. I mean, there's not many reasons why you'd be cutting wires in your PC unless you're doing mods and stuff. And if you're watching this video, you probably uh, are, are looking at some of the basics rather than being like, I'm a power user and I'm a modder. I, I order side cutters, I never heard of those before. Other things too that you could get, and this is not even part of the iFixit sponsorship. It's just, I don't think people realize that iFixit tools come in all sorts of different size and shapes. So for instance, you've got the mini bit driver set here that we've showed a million times. It's got everything from you know, your standard hex heads, it's got Allen keys, it's got tamper-proof Torx bits, it's got ran standard Torx Phillips, it's got Allen's, I think I already said, an extension, the little spinning handle. But you also can get it where it has both, where it has the mini bit set and the standard bit driver here, which uses the much, you know, the big boy. Like this is Phil, this is me, like in terms of size difference. And look at this thing, this thing is beefy. So if you wanted, you could actually just get yourself a tool set like this, omit the uh, screwdriver entirely from the standard screwdriver like I showed you because all of these bits are magnetic. So this would be a great companion to building your system because sometimes you'll find that you might your, your tip might be a little too big and it doesn't fit in the screwdriver screw head very well. We'll just stop digging ourselves a hole right there. And you can get yourself a complete tool set like that, which will basically have any bit that you would ever need in there. So this one might seem like a no brainer. You'd be surprised how long I actually went without having a screwdriver in my toolbox. For the most part, I think because most of us are just like, we just use our cell phones. You just take the LED and there you go. Okay, that's cool and all, but this is way brighter. If you drop a screw or you're trying to trace a wire or something, you know, this is just, having a, a flashlight in your toolbox is obviously a no-brainer. This is just a cheap LED one off Amazon. I think it was like six bucks. Really bought it because of the battery that was inside because it's the same battery we use in the controllers for our FPV drones. I just happened to get a flashlight with it. And I was like, hey, check it out, shop flashlight. So this just allows you to obviously be able to, you know, look around in your system. I've literally gone more than a decade without a flashlight in my toolbox. So now we have one. It only costs a couple bucks. Now we're talking about some of the cable management stuff. And with that is why I would then recommend getting yourselves obviously electrical tape as well as double-sided sticky tape. Double-sided sticky tape is the modder's best friend. It doesn't matter if you, even if you're modding or not, it's just it's the modder's best friend because with so many people running SATA SSDs now, the cool thing about this double-sided sticky tape from 3M is that a little bit of heat and it'll come off but you could then stick an SSD anywhere you want. Not just be limited to where your cases are telling you that they should go, but maybe because of the way the wires are routed and, and you can find it a little bit neater to move the drive somewhere else, just cut a piece of this off, stick it to the back of the SSD and stick it somewhere else in the case. Just when it's time to take it off, I would recommend using a heat gun or at least a hair dryer to warm up the tape before you take it off because we've actually had instances where we go to take the SSD off and bend the SSD cage, like the entire enclosure because the tape sticks so good. So this is the gray tape or technically the black tape that we use. Um, there's also the white tape. The white tape tends to stick stronger in my opinion than this guy. Uh, there's also clear. You guys can find whichever works for you, but I always have this on hand because I'm constantly sticking stuff in other places. Electrical tape is quickly becoming my replacement for zip ties. They're a lot neater. They, it, you know, it, you only need a little piece of it to hold things together and you don't have the big giant like claspy part of the uh, zip tie that's getting in the way that starts to make the backside look all funky because obviously you've got this little head right here that the zip tie goes through. And even if you're using a tiny one like this and you're dealing with small wires, you end up with this piece right here sticking up all over the backside of your case. And then it really just starts to look bad. Now, for the most part, people aren't gonna see it and you're probably not gonna care. But if you start taking pride in your builds, you'll start caring about stuff like this because you will know that it's back there. So double-sided sticky tape for holding down controllers, RGB controllers, SSDs, and then electrical tape to be able to more neatly get your system uh, cable managed. Yes, fans. No, not for your case, but to test the headers on your motherboard. Now we're starting to think about troubleshooting here, not just building your computer, but you've built your computer, time has elapsed, and now you're trying to figure out and troubleshoot things that have started happening. You've had a fan stop turning. Is it the fan that went bad or is it the header? Having a cheap fan, whether it be a takeout unit from some sort of a pre-built or a case. Cases always come with the cheapest fans that the manufacturer can possibly put in there because they know most of the time people are gonna switch them out for a better unit. At the very least, ones that match. 
So if you keep the cheapest fan you have on hand, whether it be a three pin header or a four pin header, this will at least allow you to quickly troubleshoot and test the header with a separate fan to make sure that it's working rather than sitting there and going through all the trouble to uncable manage and take a fan out, plug in a new fan and just to realize that header on your motherboard has died. May not seem like that common of occurrence, it's happened common enough for me anyway in the last you know, 30 years that I've been building computers. So it's kind of nice to be able to have this on hand, just in the toolbox, pop it out, put it on the header, make sure it works. Also too, you can use this to make sure your header speed controller is working. What happens more often than not is that the header doesn't fail, the speed controller does. So it's no longer slowing up and sl or speeding up and slowing down with the percentages you set in the BIOS or your fan controller. And when that starts to happen by default, the fan will either shut off entirely because the header stops working or it just defaults to 12 volts and you get full speed all the time. This is just a basic SanDisk thumb drive. It gives you a way to easily download drivers, BIOS, firmwares, software, because more often than not, if you're troubleshooting a system, you might need to go and grab drivers or software off of a working computer or one that's at least connected to the internet to get yourself up and running. One of the quickest ways to troubleshoot a system that's acting weird is to update the firmware or the BIOS on the motherboard. And to do that, you need a USB drive. Nothing sucks more than hunting all around through your drawers, your drawers, not your underwear, or your kitchen cabinet or your junk drawer to try and find a USB stick so that you can get your drivers and stuff updated. And then not knowing what's on that USB stick and then it just turns into a big old hassle. So having one dedicated to that specific purpose should always be in your toolbox. They are so inexpensive now on Amazon that there's no reason you shouldn't have at least like an eight gigabyte version in your drawer or in your toolbox or whatever, wherever you keep your PC building tools so that you always have the latest software available. Now we're gonna move on to a little bit more advanced testing here or advanced tools. This is, most of this we're showing you is completely optional. I'll be honest, this is truly all you need to build your computer. But now we're talking about making the job a little bit easier. And now you've built your computer and you wanna start troubleshooting it. And I already talked about the fan, the fan being a great way to test headers. But now let's say you're having a computer that won't turn on. You're pushing power and nothing's happening. Having a basic multimeter or a voltage tester, whatever you wanna call it, they, sure, they can get really expensive. You get into like Fluke and some of the more um, commercial grade stuff, but you can get an inexpensive multimeter or mul multimeter, depending on where you live, uh, inexpensive like Harbor Freight, any sort of hardware store. You don't have to have an expensive digital one. It can even just be one with the needle that moves. All you're looking for is power and it's basic. You've got your ground and you've got your hot wire. This is for 12 volt testing. Obviously it can test AC as well, but this would allow you to start checking the different pinouts on your power supply. Because if you wanna know if your power supply took a, took a dump, you're gonna to have to start testing each ground wire, each hot wire, the three volt, the five volt, the 12 volt, check it at the 24 pin, check it at the eight pin. That way you can actually troubleshoot whether or not your power supply or something has taken a dive, where you are uh, gonna waste time unplugging things and plugging things in and pulling your hair out when you can go right to the basic testing and say, do we even have power? You can find lots of guides on YouTube on how to use a multimeter, what the different, uh, so you got ohms, you've got volts, you've got AC, you've got uh, continuity, which means it's a circuit completed. You can learn how to use these basic videos on, on YouTube. But usually what you'll find is that they come with different uh, types of probes. So these are already sharpened. This will allow you to poke a wire so you can poke through the insula insulation without having to shield it or, or cut it back, which will mean when you pull it out, then the, the insulation will kind of close on itself and then it's not exposed. You can find some too that are even long like needles. That way you can get in there real deep if you have thick insulation, that way you can at least check uh, stuff going on with your system. Nothing sucks more than troubleshooting power problems without a multimeter. This one right here is gonna serve us a few purposes. Blue shop towels, 91% isopropyl alcohol. You can get it up to 99% isopropyl and down as low as like 70%. This is gonna come in so handy the first time you go to swap out your cooler or your CPU. Thermal paste gets everywhere. It gets on your fingers. It gets on your, the edges of your CPU. It gets down in your socket. It just gets everywhere. You're, you're putting down your nice, perfect grain of rice method of your, uh, you know, your thermal paste on your CPU and you lift up the, the 
dropper or whatever the applicator is called, and a big string just goes right across everything. Jay. Hmm? Oh man. <laughs> the nice thing about isopropyl alcohol, it just dries extremely fast and it's not gonna damage anything. You can use this to spray it anywhere. I like to spray when I'm cleaning and then I like to use the isopropyl when I'm dealing, or the uh, squeeze bottle, specifically when I'm dealing with CPUs. And then you're gonna use the blue shop towels to clean up your mess because these don't really leave any fibers behind. Now to go along with cleaning, you're gonna wanna keep yourself protected so you can get these nitrile gloves and this is perfect when you're putting on thermal paste, cleaning off thermal paste, or just handling components in your, C or in your system that you don't wanna leave finger grease on. If you're gonna start getting into like modding your PC or painting your case or whatever, then you're gonna want to uh, obviously have gloves on hand. Getting isopropyl alcohol on your skin will dry it out real fast, it turns it white. So use gloves when you're using alcohol and any other solvents. Uh, and then the blue shop towels because they leave a lot less um, fibers behind than something like paper towels. So not completely non-fibrous. You could actually use a um, coffee filter for completely non-fibrous cleaning. But blue shop towels are good enough along with your isopropyl alcohol. Now we're going to kind of step it up a little bit here. If you want to start modding your computer, you want to start you know, adding fan holes or you want to start doing custom cable management and making holes that don't exist, nothing beats a rotary tool. It doesn't have to be Dremel. It could be some Amazon brand. It could be Harbor Freight. Any sort of a rotary tool. A rotary tool just means it's got a motor attached to a direct drive axle that turns and you can put bits in there like cutting wheels and polishing wheels and grinders and sanding discs. Just about every mod you've seen me do on this channel from the Star Wars mod down to the Destiny 2 build or just basic trimming of components to make them fit. All, has all been done with this guy right here. My, this is a Dremel 4000 specifically. It's got uh, a knob on here that you can turn to adjust the speed. A RPM adjustable rotary tool is highly recommended over a fixed speed because depending on the type of bit that you're using will determine the kind of speed that you want to run. This is absolutely the number one tool any modder uses. And then you can you know, buy different bit sets to have all your cutting discs, sanding wheels, and all that sort of stuff. To go along with that, you're gonna want uh, a drill, a basic drill. This is a DeWalt 20 volt max. Uh, I got tired of using the 12 volt stuff that, and the 18 volt stuff that kept dying on me real quick. Um, this is obviously for drilling holes. I've also attached buffing wheels to this. I've chucked stuff up into this and, and I'll spin it. That way I can cut tubing and whatnot. I've turned this into just a basic lathe and I do stuff with it. You saw me use this exact thing um, when we were doing the glass build. When I had Nick hold this and slowly spin the piece of glass, uh, when I was showing you guys how to bend the glass tubing, I mean, we use that like a just cheap little lathe. So there's lots of stuff that you can do with that. For water cooling, nothing beats a basic squeezy bottle, especially if you're dealing with distro plates these days because they're not large capacity, they're pretty thin. You gotta try and get you know, fluid down in a thing that's all awkward. And if you hook a fitting and a tube up to it, then the air has to escape the same inlet that the fluid's coming down and that exchange takes forever. Bubbles pop everywhere. So just having a basic squeezy bottle, which is only, I think this one was like three bucks, uh, definitely makes life a lot easier there. And then last but not least, a couple of little honorable mentions here. This right here is a little jumper cable. All it is is a reverse end of a 24 pin and then it's got a jumper cable that puts basically the ground to the start wire on your power supply. Remember your motherboard completes the circuit that tells the power supply to turn on by bridging these two headers when you push the button. That's how the trace works through the motherboard. By plugging this into your power supply it means that your power supply on off switch now can turn on the five volt, three volt, 3.3 volt and 12 volt. So you can use it to test things like fans and test power supplies to make sure they're working or power up water pumps to bleed a system and get it filled without having to turn on the motherboard and having to get hot. A lot of power supply companies are actually including these now with their power supplies. This is like a $1 pick tool. They call them dental picks, but I wouldn't use this on your teeth, honestly. Uh, I think I got this one at Harbor Freight. I like to use this when I'm trying to fish something out or like grab onto a wire to pull it if it's behind something. I'll file down the end so it's not sharp because I don't want to sit there and start stabbing stuff on accident, especially if we're talking about metal stuff. Make sure your power supply is off. Make sure your caps are discharged. That way you're not bridging anything and blow stuff up. But this just really comes in handy if there's like a, you know, there's a wire down in there and you got to get it, you know, there you go. You can pull it up like that. So that's what I use this for. But beyond that, that's pretty much it. 
I know this seemed like a lot to kind of throw out there. These are just tools that, I mean, obviously we have a whole shop here that we use, but this is just tools that I've acquired over the years that I've just go, you know what? Anytime I need something, if I don't have it, I buy it. And this is the stuff we come back to over and over and over again. 95% of our videos, we just use these two guys right here. And then obviously the side cutters and our zip ties. Like this is 95% of what we do right here. Zip ties, side cutters, either the motorized screw bit or the standard multi-tool. Sound off in the comments below on what your go-to tool, go to, that's hard to say. Go-to tools are for your PC building toolbox. And as always, huge thank you to iFixit for sponsoring today's video. Get the father in your life or the father figure in your life an iFixit toolkit by following the link down below. Save $10 off orders of $50 or more. And I guarantee you'll be the MVP because I got my first iFixit kit from my wife for Father's Day about four years ago. And that thing is still going strong. I use it all the time, especially now with the drones. And these guys keep stealing my bits. Stop using my stuff, Nick. I don't use it, okay. <laughs> I didn't even use it, okay. Because you realized you do. Yeah, I'm like, hold on. <laughs>